Okay, so today I will repeat some information I covered before. So please pay attention, which is analysis and the design of frames. Just to give you a hint, if you have a piece of land and we would like to build our house, so the first step we need to uh, uh, draw the layout. So I will put main system in the short direction to be repeated in the long direction. The spacing between each main system called S and this is uh, probably uh, something like uh, 25 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, but make sure the spacing will be uh, equal spacing. This is not the point right now, but the point is this main system can be truss or can be frame. We covered trusses before. This truss looks like this. Most of the time. And you have Berlin at each joint of the truss. We don't have a choice for the location of Berlin's. Uh, we have Berlin's, and we learned how to calculate the dead load, the life load, snow load, wind load for trusses. Finally, the dead load and the life load and the snow load will be concentrated load at each joint. Does that make sense? And also for wind load, the wind load will be concentrated load perpendicular at each joint. We learned all of this stuff. And we learned how to build or how to model this truss using RISA 2D and how we can define this case of loading and how we can make combination of them. Sometimes we don't like this truss, we would like frames. This frame looks like this, very simple. Fixed or hinged. This member is a vertical member. This one is a sloped member and is the same here and the same there. That's all. So sometimes your main system, which is repeated every spacing S, can be free. Also, you have to choose where is the Berlin's. We, you have a choice right now. You don't have specific point like uh, truss. For truss, we need to put the Berlin at the joint. But for frame, no, you have a choice. But we need to figure out what is the dead load, what is the life load, what is the snow load, what is the wind load, what will happen. And how we can model this frame using RISA 2D how to do combination between this case of loading and how to design frames. We will cover all of this stuff today because we don't have something new, just repeating. Let's start. For dead load on the frame, we have two parts of the dead load. Weight of the structure or the steel structure itself we can assume it between 100 to 200 pound per square feet. The weight of covering a material, sometimes the covering roof 
is flexible roof just only corrugated steel sheet at this time we can assume it between 25 to 50 or we have rigid roof which is concrete slab at this time the weight of the slab will be gamma concrete time ts but uh, uh, this one is horizontal projection and this one is inclined projection before going through, I would like to explain what is the difference between horizontal projection HB or inclined projection IP. This one called horizontal projection. This one is called inclined projection. I will explain what is the difference related to the structural analysis point of view. If you have inclined member or sloped member, this inclined member under the effect of horizontal projection distributed load will be looks like this. So I will say five kip barefoot H B during the FE exam or professional engineer exam. You can find this expression. You will see beam or member inclined, and you have distributed load looks like a way from the member. It's uh, weird for me. This is the first time to see something like this. No. The meaning of this position of the distributed load, this distributed load is applied to the member, believe me, but it's called horizontal projection. I will explain what is the meaning. Uh, inclined projection means the applied load looks like this. I will say five kip bear foot without saying anything so what is the meaning the meaning is very 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 simple if you have horizontal projection of distributed load on sloped member the equivalent for this distributed load equal five time l l is the horizontal projection for this member I didn't say five time lens of the member. No, the horizontal lens of the member. So L here is the horizontal lens. So horizontal projection means if you have distributed load, please, if you would like to get the concentration or the equivalent of this distributed load, you have to multiply this value of distributed load by horizontal lens of the sloped member. If you have inclined projection, okay, go ahead and multiply this value of distributed load by inclined lens of the member. Does that make sense? This is the only difference between horizontal projection and inclined projection. You have to keep it in your mind. It's very important. During the exams for if you were PE, Sometimes they are asking you what is the equivalent for this loot? What is the equivalent for this loot? So you have to keep in your mind this one is horizontal projection. I have to multiply it by horizontal distance, not actual lens. Any question? Any question so far related to this point? Okay, so keep in your mind. Uh, by the way, by the way, if you have member and is the same member, this member under the effect of two keep barefoot horizontal projection, and we have inclined projection force three keep barefoot. I cannot add two plus three equal five keep 
barefoot doesn't make any sense i cannot do this i cannot do this i cannot add distributed load is horizontal which is a horizontal projection to a, a, a distributed load which is inclined projection i cannot do this until i uh, convert one to the other one so this is the, uh, the problem right now we have two parts of the dead load one is called the horizontal projection and the second one is called inclined projection i need to get what is the value of dead load total so i have to add this one to this one how can i do this we need to change we need to convert one to the other one so if you would like to get the w did load total uh, w steel time s plus w concrete time s divide cosine theta this divide or this division by cosine theta i converted this term to be like this term as you see this force or this assumption a uh, bound per square feet so if you multiply this force by spacing because each system main system is uh, supporting from center line to center line so i will multiply it by s so i will multiply w steel by s i will multiply w concrete uh, wc covering by s but this one is still inclined projection this one is still horizontal projection so i need to convert one to the other one so i used this expression w steel time s it's okay w concrete time s it's okay but i will divide it by cosine theta this theta is this sloped angle the final value w did load will be horizontal projection so this load is horizontal projection so i i kept this one as it is and i converted this one to be like this one so i divided it by cosine theta so do you remember what we did for truss do you remember for truss, we multiply W steel by S by A. So the final will be concentrated load at each joint of the truss. For frame, no, we, we don't have A. We have only spacing between this main system and the other main system. Then the final value of dead load will be distributed load over the frame, which is horizontal projection. This is the first difference between frame and the truss. The second one, life load. Uh, for a sloping or flat roof with the slopes up to an incline, incline uh, including till degree. So uh, when axis is provided, the life load value will be 30. When axis is not provided, the life load will be 50. If you have a slope greater than 10 degree, the life load will be taken as 15, less 0.5 for every degree increase in a slope over 10 degree. We covered this before. Uh, the value of life load will be what you selected from this time spacing. And the life load will be horizontal projection. So right now, the second difference, for truss, life load or dead load was concentrated load at each joint. And this concentrated load equal dead load times spacing time A. Life load times spacing time A. But for truss, uh, I'm sorry, for frame, no, we have a different story. For dead load, time S only. For life load, time S only. And your load will be distributed load, which is horizontal projection. 
guys keep in your mind this distributed load is applied on this part and this part don't ask me why you are drawing this load away this is the meaning of horizontal projection the meaning if you have inclined and the, the, the load is horizontal projection i will draw it like this Believe me, this distributed load is applied on this member. Why I draw it like this? Because it's a horizontal projection. That makes sense? For wind load, we covered this before. So the first step, we need to calculate the fluctuating pressure based on what is the velocity, what is the value of KD, KZT, KZ, based on this, nothing changed. The only difference, uh, the only variable here in this expression is KZ. This term based on what is the elevation of the building. Okay. And then I will convert the fluctuating pressure to when the pressure P equal Q, GCP minus QH GCPI and I will uh, calculate the windward, the leeward, the roofward and uh, this one for roof. So we have uh, windward roof and the leeward roof. Remember uh, this one is windward. This one is leeward this one is windward roof this one is leeward roof so the final shape of the distributed load by the way the pressure that you calculated from this step will be multiplied by s the spacing between the main system to convert the wind pressure to distributed load and this distributed load on the wind ward will looks like this this will be at 15 feet height uh, for the leeward will be constant for the wind ward roof will be upward force constant uh, distributed load perpendicular to the inclined member for the leeward roof will be distributed load perpendicular to the uh, inclined member remember when the pressure and when the load are perpendicular to the surface just to remind you, just to remind you, four truss that we covered before, your pressure time S time A, you can convert it to concentrated load at each node or at each joint of the truss. But for frame, the wind pressure time s only so your load will be distributed load perpendicular to the surface that makes sense so in frame we don't have the third term a because we don't need to convert it to concentrated load and this one will be distributed until 15 feet and then the value will be increased until 20 and so on and here it is distributed this is for the wind for snow if you have flat roof flat roof not sloped so we expect snow on the roof how much P flat equal 0.7 CE CT IS B 
g. The value of CE from this table exposure factor, CT from this table uh, based on the structure, uh, and the IS importance factor based on where is the building in category, risk category one or two or three or four, whatever. BG based on the map of the United States, you have to locate your building. Then you can figure out the value of PG based on this atlas. Does that make sense? So if your roof is flat, your the pressure of the snow equal to this one time this one time this one time this one time this one. But if your roof is a slot, we need to multiply the flat roof value by CS. CS. I can use this chart or this chart or this chart based on the value of CT and based on the slope angle, I can go up to figure out the value of CS. Once you get the slope snow load, please go ahead and multiply this value by S. Spacing between the main system, then you can convert the snow load to uniform distributed load horizontal projection. Horizontal projection. So the, right now, the final conclusion is if you have frame, I can calculate what is the dead load value, what is the life load value, what is the wind load value, what is the slip, snow load value. Keep in your mind for dead load, looks like the, the uniform distributed load, horizontal projection. For life load, the same, uniform distributed load, horizontal projection. For snow load, uniform distributed load, horizontal projection. The value of dead load time s, the value of life load time s, the value of snow load time s. It's very easy. For wind load, pressure time s, pressure time s, pressure time s, pressure time s, pressure, time s. and your load looks like this. Uniform distributed load. Uniform distributed load. Uniform distributed load. Uniform distributed load. Once you calculated the dead load, life load, snow load, and wind load, the next step is we need to analyze this frame using RISA 2D to figure out what is the axial force, what is the shear force, what is the bending moment. Believe me, if you uh, uh, model a frame and you apply dead life, snow, and wind load, you will get axial force, shear force, and bending moment diagram. Let's see this example and how can I open the RISA floor, I'm sorry, the RISA 2D to analyze this frame. So please, do you have any questions so far? I need to add here, we have W, snow load, equal 0.5 keb per foot. So we have frame, the span is 50 feet. The column height here is 20 feet, and this height from this point and this point is 5 feet. And we have, after calculations of dead load, life load, snow load, and wind, we found the value of dead load here, life load, snow load, and wind load looks like this. Uh, for dead, 2 k per foot. For life, 1 k per foot. For uh, snow load, 0.5 k per foot. 
uh, for wind load, the wind ward roof 0.8, uh, lee ward roof 0.6, and this value is 1.1. This value is 1.2. This value is 0.8. Keep foot. Keep barefoot. Keep barefoot. This is for wind loot. Life, dead, and the snow. And we need to model this frame on Risa to figure out what is the internal forces on in the frame. Let's start. If you have any question related to Risa, please let me know. I will assume my origin is here. So we have X and we have Y. So I have zero, zero. Dr. Ayman, where did you get those values, if you don't mind me asking? I'm sorry? Do you mind me asking where you got those values, the 1.1 and the 1.2? I assumed them. Oh, you assumed them? Okay. Yeah. You, you should do your calculations. Okay. Yes. I, I was just you, should, you should start from scratch. Finally, finally, you will get these values. You know what I mean? So I just assumed any values. Uh, and you did these calculations in the first exam. If you go back to the, this problem in the first exam, just don't use A. If you go back, you will find dead load plus S plus A. Life load time S time A. Uh, snow load time S time A. Remove this A from your calculation. You will find yourself. You are calculating the dead load, life load, snow load, and wind load for free. This is the only difference. So assume we have a final conclusion that these values are for dead and life and the way and the snow, and these values for wind. So if you assume this origin, so we have zero, zero, this point will be zero and the 20. This point will be 25 and 25 x and y this point will be 50 and 20 this point will be 50 and 0 okay if i open the reza 2d what is reza 2d very well I will hide drawing a grid, insert point zero zero. Uh, the second point will be at zero and twenty, then twenty five and twenty five, fifty and twenty, fifty and zero. I need to delete the current line. Yeah. There you go. Does that make sense? So insert members, hot rolled steel section. Probably we can assume your cross section is 10 times 30. Let's start with this one and see it's uh, safe or not safe. But keep in your mind, I assumed W 10 times 30 for this frame. Let's see. 10 times 30. Okay, apply. And then I will go ahead and draw the frame. That makes sense. Fix it, insert boundaries. We have fixed it at this node and this node. The next step I need to define dead loot. Do you remember? We have dead loot, we have life loot, and we have wind loot. 
and we have a snow load. I will put dead load in case number one, live load in case number two, wind load in case number three, the snow load in case number four. It's up to you as you like, but I assume this dead load in case number one, live load in case number two, wind load in case number three, snow load in case number four. Let's start. Uh, insert distributed load case number one. So you are on the loop. What is the value? Two k per foot. Do you think I will put here two? Do you think this? Do you think the dead load will be two? Do you agree? If you put this, the value of the load will be in y direction. What's wrong? No. This dead load must be horizontal projection. If you go back here to your notes, for horizontal projection, you have to choose something different in direction, which is PY. I know it's still in Y direction, but it's P, horizontal projection, or projected Y. Projected P, Y means projected Y direction. Your value will be how much? Two. That's fine. Two K per foot. And the end location will be at 100%. You apply. This one, oh, we have a mistake. We have a mistake. Do you know what is a mistake? Your value must be negative. I know it's in Y direction, but it's down. So projection, here you go, here you go. One will say, hey, Dr. Ayman, why it's a horizontal projection and Zariza did not draw it like this? It's okay. Ariza cannot draw it like this. But did you see something? The value here is not two, is 1.96. Yeah, because the Riza draw it on the member. So Riza converted it to inclined projection. That makes sense? I defined it. P, Y. The value is negative 2. However, Riza showing up 1.96. The reason is because Riza cannot draw this shape, Riza will draw it like inclined projection. So Riza converted it rather than 2 to be 1.96. Anyway, insert distributed load. I will change the basic load to basic load two. Projection, Y, the value of life load, one K per foot. So your value will be negative one. And the negative one, the end location at 100%. Apply. This one, this one. Believe me, these values are horizontal projection. Horizontal projection value should be one, but it's saying negative 0.98 because the reason converted it from horizontal projection to inclined projection looks like this. The third load, is this no load in case number four? Case number four. So insert distributed load. Case number four. I assumed it. Case number four for snow. Projection Y. What is the value of a snow load? 0.5. So negative 0.5. Apply this one and this one. That makes sense. I am done with dead, live, and the snow. Let's start the, to define wind load. Let's start with this one. 0.8. Okay. 
insert distributed load the case right now is number three the direction will be x direction this one will be in x direction positive x the value will be negative uh, positive 0.8 100 percent there you go for this one for this one what is the value 1.1 from 0 to 15 i believe this elevation will be 15 and you know why because kz will change will be constant from 0 to 15 after 15 it will be changed and will increase so i expect the first constant value will be at elevation 15 that makes sense and the second elevation at 20. so the first one at 1.1 in x direction so uh, insert distributed load in x 1.1 at end location equal 15 feet apply here you go here you go one more time the second value here 1.2 insert distributed load 1.2 the start location at 15 the end location at 20 feet let's see here you go this one is 1.1 this one is 1.2 insert distributed load the value for this one 0.8 do you think the direction will be x no will be y no it's not vertical will be projection no it's not horizontal projection when the load is not horizontal projection what should i do it will be small y and i told you this information before for trust y is local the value is 0 0.8 0 0.8 0 100 percent apply let's see this load is concentrated is perpendicular to the slope member the next one is 0.6 insert distributed load 0.6 apply there you go so I put in your notes for when the load for the inclined member for this member or this member please choose from here small y for direction for horizontal projection this one did load life load when uh, snow load please go ahead and select from here projected y the next step we need to do or to apply combination actually i cannot remember the combination so i will go back to the first i think uh, module module number one here you go we have this combination combo number one one pointed uh, one point four dead the second one one point two dead one point six live and the point five snow the third one one point two dead one point six snow and the point five l uh, life loop one point two dead one wind point five life point five snow one point two dead we don't have a earthquake so cancel this one uh 0.9 dead uh, plus 
one wind we can consider this one so we have one we have two we have uh, three we have four we have five five combination let's start bridge sheet load combination the first one basic load case will be basic load case number one the scale factor 1.4 the second combination 1.2 dead 1.6 life 0.5 is no so for dead 1.2 or life which is case number two the factor will be one point oh i'm sorry wait case number two uh the scale factor is 1.6 and snow Snow here is case number uh, four, I think. Uh, scale factor is 0.5. That makes sense. 0.5, snow, 1.6 life, 1.2 dead. The third one, 1.2 dead, 1.6 snow, 0.5 life. So for dead, 1.2. This one will be snow, 1.6, and for life 0.5 for life loot 0.5 the third the fourth combination 1.2 dead one wind 0.5 life 0.5 snow 1.2 dead uh, for wind which is case number three the scale factor will be one. Then uh, life is 0 0.5, snow is 0 0.5. This one will be life, okay. This one will be snow. 0 0.5. I think we, we, we did all of this information before. Uh, the last one, 0 0.9 dead, plus one wind dilute. 0.9 dead and this one went will be one and the nothing here uh how can i delete this one there you go so we have one two three four five combination then I can solve. Please choose here envelope. Envelope means the final answer is the maximum keys, the maximum envelope. Envelope, solve. Okay. Let's see. Hide the applied loot. Let's start with the axial force. Here you go. I can draw this one is here. So this frame has axial force like this. The values normal force diagram. The value here. Uh, 106. 0.3 compression the value here is uh, 75.3 and the same here 75 point no no not the same because it's not symmetric weight uh 75.3 yeah it's uh, 1.6.2 This is for a uh, normal force. The same frame has shear force diagram. Here you go. This is the shear force diagram. The value here. The value here. How much? 
55.5, and the same, approximately. Okay. For bending moment, here you go. Here is the bending moment diagram. Your bending moment diagram looks like this. What is the value? Uh, 447.7. The value here, 662.4. And the value there is 402.7. And the same here. This is bending moment diagram, shear force diagram, normal force diagram. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? So for Riza, it should be very simple because how to draw this frame is more easier than uh, drawing a truss. That makes sense? How to calculate dead load, life load, snow load, wind load, exactly the same like truss, but we don't multiply by distance A. We only multiply by S. I did my analysis. I defined my load cases, load combination, and I get the final answers. For this member, for this member, vertical member, we have problem right now this member has normal force equal or i'm sorry i can say it p ultimate equal 106.3 cap the same member in the same trial in the same frame has m ultimate which is the maximum value, 662.4 or 447. I will use the maximum one. 662.4 kip foot. This member, I assumed it to be W10 times 30. Can you tell me it's safe or unsafe? If you go back to the previous meeting, I covered this example. First step, this one will be designed as beam column member. Do you know why? Because we have P ultimate and we have M ultimate at the same time on the same member. So I need to check. Do you think the P ultimate divide phi Pn greater than or equal 0.2? If it is, go ahead and use this interaction equation and make sure this term plus this term smaller than one. If it is, this cross section that you choose is safe. Or P ultimate divide, divide phi Pn grid is smaller than Pn. Go ahead and use this expression. And make sure the two terms less than one. If it is, the cross section is safe. If the value far away from 1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, it's more safe. You can reduce it. If it's just, uh, uh, if it's greater than 1, it will be unsafe. That makes sense. So, guys, if I ask you to design frame, we have steps. First step: What are the loading values? Dead load, life load, wind load, snow load. Second step: Analyze using reason. To give me what is the axial force, shear force, bending moment. 
for any member. For example, I covered this member and I found P ultimate equal 106.3 and I found the maximum moment equal 662.4. So I can design this member based on beam column member. The same for this member. For example, this inclined member we have P ultimate equal 75.3 and the M ultimate equal, we have here 662, we have here 402, I will use 662.4. I will do the same calculation for this member to make sure this one is safe. Does that make sense? The other members will be the same. Probably you don't need to repeat them. So if you go back to the last meeting, and I believe your homework, uh, we don't have homework. Uh, uh, the last meeting, the last example, we have a member, P ultimate equal a value, M ultimate equal a value. This value right now, I can get them from Risa. Then I can use these steps to figure out the assumed cross section is safe or unsafe. If I open your current homework, homework number nine, I think, I will start from scratch. Can you go ahead and lay out to draw the layout? Your main system is free. Probably I will choose my spacing, probably 30 feet. So S equal 30. I will put my layout. The second step, I need to calculate how much dead load, how much life load, how much snow, how much wind on this frame. Remember, the dead load, life load, and the snow load will be horizontal projection, something like this. So what is the value of dead? What is the value of life? What is the value of a snow? For uh, wind load, no. We will have something here, which is bigger, a little bit here, and something here, and something here, and something here. Believe me, go back to your previous calculation for trusses and use the same sequence, but don't use distance A. Use only spacing S. Once you set up your dead load and the life load and the snow load and wind load, go ahead and use Risa to analyze this frame. When you are using Risa, you can assume any cross section like we did here in this frame. We assume the cross section to be W10 times 30. I solved the frame. And I found the internal forces for normal force, shear force, bending moment. Go ahead and design. Uh, actually, I'm not designing right now. I'm checking. For this vertical member, what is the axial force, P ultimate? What is the bending moment, M ultimate? And make sure this member that you assumed is safe. Do the same calculation for this inclined or sloped member. This one and this one. So the last one, design used the previous layout to design uh, the connection will be designed next meeting for connection i will start next meeting to use Risa connection so probably in the coming exam you should expect something like this problem like this one i will give you frame and a piece of land you need to draw your layout. Where is the spacing? It will be very easy. Then you need to show the calculation for dead life and wind. And I explained them here step by step. For dead load, for example, you have this equation. W steel or W structure, you can assume between 100 and 200. 
W concrete, you can get it from uh, gamma concrete time uh, uh, thickness, or you can assume it based on what is the type of roof. And the cosine theta is the angle of slope here. Once you set up your values, you can get W degree. It's very easy. For life load, you have to figure out first, uh, what is the slope? Is it uh, flat? Uh, what is the angle of slope? Is it greater than 10? So you need to define what is the value of life load. Once you get the value of life load, go ahead and multiply this life load by S. You can get W life load as horizontal projection. For wind load, the same fluctuating pressure, wind pressure, and then the wind pressure will be multiplied by S to get all of these values. For snow, go ahead and define B flat and then B slope. Once you get B slope, go ahead and multiply this B slope by S. You can get the snow load as horizontal projection. Finally, your values will be like this. Go ahead and use RISA to analyze your frame, get normal force, shear force, bending moment. Then you can design as B column member. Any question? Do you think it's uh, it's easy? Uh, are those diagrams only based on? No, no, no. Uh, I, uh, did you remember when I started to solve? I started here envelope. Envelope means. I will, the reason will solve for each combination and get or give me the final maximum combination. Just one more time. We have many combinations. Combo number one, number two, number three, number four, and the number five. Which one I'm going to use to design the maximum one? The one that give me maximum value. So once you select here envelope, and the solve, then Riza will give you the maximum value. Does that make sense? Okay. So, um, next meeting on Thursday, I will show you something interesting. We have here connection between vertical member and the sloped member. We have here connection. We have a connection between this column and the foundation. How can we design these connections? I will show it to you next meeting, but using new software called Risa. Connection, this one. I don't have license for it, so I will run it as a demo. We have different connection. For example, let's see, probably this one. Can you see? We have footing. And we have a column and how we can connect between the vertical member, the vertical column and the footing. Then we can apply your forces and the program will tell you this arrangement. Do you think four bolts will be enough? Do you think the thickness of this blade will be enough? Do you think this column and the dimension of this footing will be enough? All of these will be covered next meeting.